Hello YouTubers, welcome to another episode. As you can tell from the title, we're talking about my pears rowing technique and we've got some lovely flat water to do it on. So let's go straight onto the water and have a little bit of a chat on what I've been working on. And let me know in the comments below if you can see any improvements from before or you think that there are some more things I could be working on. So let's get to it, all you. And we've made it into the beginning of another session in the pair and we'll be on the water in a minute as we walk down onto the dock and it's one of these days with this beautiful sunrise as we see here where we really have to or really should appreciate the opportunities that we have and hopefully you guys can appreciate the opportunities you have you have opportunities that I could only dream of and vice versa but just looking at that sunrise it's absolutely amazing and it's an amazing opportunity to just row while that is happening. So looking at the small things oh, can make a really big difference. But now that that's over with, it's time to get onto the water and talk about my actual technique that I've been working on. So we're going to start with just some paddling and then we'll look at the stuff we did before on the 2K and because we were a bit disappointed with how we performed and how we rode, so I'm going to discuss that and then look at what we could change. So let's get into some paddling to begin with. Okay, so we've made it onto the water. We're paddling alongside Ed and Robson on this beautiful sunrise, like I already mentioned. But I really felt like I was rowing well in this session, and I thought it would be really good to sort of show what I've been working on here. If we think back to the previous My Pair Rowing Technique video, I spoke about trying to prepare a bit better, hook up a bit better, push a bit better, and make sure my drive was consistent. And obviously that can have a big play on, or, or what can have a big play on that, is confidence. So as you can see here, I'm squaring a lot better. I'm being prepared for my catch a lot better. It's not quite there, but it is significantly more prepared than before, maybe sort of a month, maybe two months ago. And what I've been working on is trying to think of my hands going down the recovery on a straight line and then not trying to dip the hands to make space. If I can finish properly and push off of the water properly, I should have enough space where if I just go horizontally to the catch, I can just square and feather. Obviously, it's easier said than done, but that's kind of what I'm focusing on, making it really simple so that it's easier to focus on for a longer period of time. And as you can see in this paddling, it's a lot easier for me, or it looks a lot easier for me to, so there's quite a lot of space underneath the blade so squaring becomes easier with that space and like I said I can't really have that space or a person rowing can't really have that space if the finish isn't correct because of course the rowing is a cyclical rowing stroke it is so one part affects another part so your catch affects the finish, the finish affects the catch drive affects recovery, recovery affects the drive so I can't have that preparedness at the catch if my finish isn't good or at least set up and so what we've been working on is being set up at the finish so I'm able to be prepared at the catch and I think I've been really coming along nicely with that and what that brings forward is the ability to almost hold the press for a little bit longer. So it's not just a case of just blazing through the water and looking for effort and hoping that you go fast. It's more of a case of, okay, my blade is now prepared, which means that I'm gonna get into the water or I can be more relaxed to get in the water. It's less of a slam in. I can be more relaxed and more connected that little bit quicker, which then means I'm able to just drive with the legs. Again, trying to be horizontal, more flat, just like I'm trying to be more horizontal and flat on the recovery, I want to be more horizontal and flat on the drive. Because like I said, 
what can be done on the drive can affect what can be done on the recovery and vice versa. So it's really, like I said, a really cyclical process, but to make it really simple, I'm really only focusing on two things. And that is that preparedness for the water. So you can see it come and go as a, as a boat trips around here. And what I mean by the preparedness into the water is getting the blade ready to enter so I can enter the water nice and relaxed rather than trying to prepare the blade and enter at the same time. And that ties into my second focus, which is driving for a longer period of time. Not harder, using my size, using the length that I can potentially generate, I'm pushing the boat along for as long as I can. Or not necessarily long as I can, but for a long period of time, rather than just, like I said, blazing through the water and losing some efficiency, if I can connect using the improved preparedness and then push for a longer period of time, it will make the boat that little bit faster and hopefully tie into a little bit better efficiency. So now we'll go into some of the race footage or the 2K piece footage from the other day and I'll kind of talk about what I think we could improve on and then let me know in the comments below if you agree or you see something different. So we've made it to the 2K row once again. A little bit different, but the technique focuses are still the same. Obviously, when the rate increases, when the intensity increases, it becomes more difficult to hold the changes you're trying to make, to hold the technique to be as efficient as you possibly can. But I mean, that is the whole point of rowing all of these miles to ingrain the proper technique and make sure that we're able to do it again and again, even under stress. So as you can see, the preparedness of the blade going into the catch isn't quite there. You can see it sort of, I'm pushing down so that horizontalness that I was talking about going across the recovery isn't there, which is tied in to the finish that you can see here. It's just not quite, not quite sending it off there, which depending on how you look at it, could be a product of not being prepared and pushing long, or it could just be a case of not just finishing off the stroke right. But the strokes should be easier to finish off right if I'm driving the stroke away properly or well off the catch. So those two focuses that I spoke about being prepared on the catch and then driving as long as I can, not quite there. And so obviously it is higher intensity and these changes are sort of a newer focus to me. So it is difficult for me to hold them. But Stan Open and I were a bit disappointed that we had these focuses for the week and found it quite difficult to do what we wanted to do during the piece itself. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of confidence that I'm not sort of perfect and everyone is, needs to work on something, whether it's big or small, doesn't matter who you are, whether it's rowing or a different sport altogether or a different job or whatever it is, nobody has everything figured out and everyone can improve on something. So let me know in the comments below, like I said, if you agree with me or you disagree or you see other things that would benefit me to work on, like I said, I'm really focusing on that sort of preparedness at the catch and driving as long as possible, using my physical attributes to the best of my ability. But that will be it for today's pair rowing technique analysis. Perhaps we will get another one soon when some changes occur. And we've made it outside of a house with a gorgeous sunset behind me. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of a chat about my pair rowing technique. It's always interesting to have a little bit of a look at my technique 
and how it has been progressing. I usually use the videos. I, I see myself rowing every every day with the videos, with the vlogs. So sometimes it gets to a point where you or I don't really notice the changes, but then when I really sit down and look and study the, the videos, it's good to see some changes. So let me know in the comments below if you have seen any changes. And like I said at the start, any changes you would recommend that I look at. But that will be it for today's episode, Yam Squad. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Again, let me know in the comments below if you like the sort of study of technique. Possibly might involve other people, other people's rowing and talk about their technique. See if we can compare that to mine or see if I think you could improve anything. But that's for future Yam Squad to look forward to. So remember to stay subscribed for that. And now it's time to fuel up because remember food is fuel. And as always, Yam Squad, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button and I will see you in the next episode.